Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and this video we are going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous 12 hours. We have a lot of very interesting updates so let's start. And of course the most important and the most interesting updates are coming from the South Donetsk direction where the Ukrainians basically were already defeated. Now what everything that we can see right now is the process of the significant Ukrainian retreat. They can't retreat let's say in a day and to cross the distance between the village of of Nova Ukrainka and let's say the Kurahova or the settlement of Nova Nakhatska. It's very difficult and complicated process, not just of retreat, but also of Russian offensive. The Russians also can advance very fast. They need to bring additional forces, reinforcements, reserves, communication, many, many other things. So it, this process is going to continue, but this process is going to be slow. Not like slow, like one square kilometer per month, but every single day we're gonna see how the Russians are cutting this South Donetsk piece of pie in many pieces and taking every single piece step by step. Now let's discuss the changes on the ground that took place uh, for the previous 24 hours. And uh, let's take a look at the map on the end of the 27th of October. So as you can see, the Russians just managed to dig in deeper along the road in the south of Shakhtarska. The Russians managed to improve their positions in the southern part of Nova Ukrainsk. And yesterday we got the first report that the sabotage and reconnaissance group of the armed forces of Russian Federation entered both the southeastern part of Shakhtarska and the southwestern part of Nova Ukrainka. Those maneuver, the, the main purpose of that maneuver was to slow down the Ukrainians, to pin them down and not to allow them to redeploy reinforcements to the fields, because as you can see, in these fields there are a lot of trenches and the fortifications. It used to be under Ukraine control, but starting on the 28th of October, these trenches were captured and secured by the Russians. For example, in this video that was published by pro-Ukrainian sources, we can see uh, another episode of Russian attack in the direction of Ukrainian positions. Once again, we can see the significant number of armored vehicles, personal tanks, personal carriers. We can see uh, the total tanks with the Russian flag. So everything according to the Russian schema. And the Ukrainians were bombing and attacking them, of course. And there are lots of episodes, as you can see. And one of the episodes of Russian offensive, Russian assault operation was discovered exactly along the history line. The Russian soldiers were trying to clear these trenches and they managed to capture them. Based on this video we have adjusted uh, these two parts in Russian favor. Uh, furthermore, we continue receiving more and more updates of the Russian attacks that have been taking place uh, since the 25th of October uh, till the 28th of October and most likely today we will continue receiving the same videos. Uh, it's very, very, very uh, unexpected attack as I understand. The Ukrainians as I understand didn't expect that the Russians do have uh, this number of vehicles and armored vehicles and I believe that the Ukrainians still asking themselves the question where the Russians managed to get these vehicles this number of vehicles where the Russians managed to hide them and how what was the intelligence doing when the Russians were preparing before this breakthrough now uh, let's once again take a look at the changes on map since the beginning of this offensive operation once again this is the situation on the 25th uh, of uh, uh, October right before the Russians began their full scale offensive. This is the situation on the 26th. The Russians managed to take under control positions to the south of Novo Ukrainka. On the 27th of October, we start receiving updates about the Russians entering the village of Novo Ukrainka from the southwest and the Russians enter Shakhtarska from the uh, southeast. And on the 28th of October, the Russians already established control over at least 33% uh, of the settlement of Novo Ukrainka and the Russians established control over 10% of the village of Shakhtarska. And as for the village of Shakhtarska, the most important is that the Russians managed to cross this natural barrier like uh, River Mal Balka Maltabar. So this territory was crossed. The Russians continue advancing. Most likely today we're going to receive, we're going to continue receiving additional updates. Now let's talk about the village of Bogoyavlinka. We have also changes on the ground. According to different mappers, the Russians managed to improve their positions between Bogoyavlinka and Novo Ukrainka by taking additional tree lines and the fortifications under control. And according to E, either uh, pro-Ukrainian uh, and pro-neutral uh, mappers, the Russians managed to take under control the western farms. As for the eastern farms, this territory we got the video that was published by the Russians and in this video we can see the Russian soldiers that were moving of course inside of the inside of the Bagayavlinka settlement itself. We can see the Russians were raising the flag in the southern part of the settlement and in the second part of the video we can also see the Russian soldier waving Russian flag in the 
farms in the you know, to the to the east of Bogoyavlinka. So this building was geolocated, and this is exactly the area where the Russian soldier was waving their flag. So based on all these things, we can make a conclusion that the situation develops very fast, and most likely, once again, during the 28th of October, we're going to receive additional updates. Most likely, Bogoyavlinka would be captured by the Russians completely. Maybe the Russians would be able to take under control the village of Novo Ukrainka. Another unexpected attack was launched by the Russians on the line between Vadiana, Konstantinovka, Katerinovka, Elizavetovka. Currently, this territory, the situation in this area is covered with a fog of war. It's very difficult to understand what exactly is happening. But, for example, the pro-Russian resources reported that as a result of clashes, the Russians managed to take the village of Katerinovka completely. So, yet we haven't received anything that can confirm Russian presence in the northwestern part, but we got we started receiving updates. Furthermore, according to NATO mappers, the Russians managed to improve their positions along the tree lines between the village of Elizavetovka and the village of Vadiana. So this small cloud was captured by the Russians. And some resources have already started beginning reporting that the first sabotage and reconnaissance group of the armed force of Russian Federation answered the village of Elizavetovka. Obviously, this is the significant progress of the armed force of Russian Federation. And obviously, we can tell that say, the Ukrainians were completely defeated in this area as well. If the Russians spanned around around 8 months to take under control of Nova Mikhailovka, if the Russians spent around 4 months to take under control Konstantinovka, the Russians spent just 1 month to take under control the village of Katerinovka and probably the village of Elizavetka would be captured by the Russians maybe within a week. So as you can see, the Russians increasing their speed. It's not just because the uh, the further to the west the Russians are moving, the less resistance in face of difference defense the Russians see. Uh, the most important that the Russians are getting more and more experience. The Ukrainian are losing experienced forces also on the ground and they tried to replace them recently mobilized uh, with, with recently mobilized soldiers that, that don't have any will to continue a uh, war and fight with the Russians. Now let's move uh, to Kurahova. During the previous 24 hours the Russians managed to discover the concentration of the forces of the 46th Iron Mobile Brigade of the Armored Force of Ukraine and as a result of fab attack the entire building was destroyed and the Russians are saying that they were soldiers of that 46th Iron Mobile Brigade brigade. Now let's move further and let's talk about uh, the village of Kurahovka. Currently there are very heavy clashes for this territory and the Russians began assault operation. Basically the Russians began assault operation of Kurahovka yesterday on the 27th of October. Uh, we still haven't received anything uh, that can confirm additional progress on the ground. No uh, different, no flags, no notal mappers update. But we need to understand one thing that there are very heavy clashes and most likely during the 28th of October October, we will adjust the map in Russian favor and the Ukrainians will begin moving further in the western directions toward the, uh, these uh, facilities uh, to that located to the west of uh, um, Kurahovka. So this is going to be the first Ukrainian uh, let's say retreat point uh, for regrouping, for concentrating forces and then they will move further in the western direction. We have a lot of changes on the ground according to different mappers. Let's compare the map uh, for the 27th of October and the 28th of October. Just yesterday the Russians reported, according to the Minister of Defense, that the village of Ismailovka was captured and secured. And today we got report that the Russians managed to secure the mine number 42 and the industrial zone in the area, the same area. Furthermore, we got confirmation from pro-Ukrainian sources that the Russians managed to secure the village of uh, the town of Garnyak completely. Furthermore, we have report, according to uh, pro-Russian resources, that it is reported that the units of the 46th Air Mobile Brigade and 33rd Mechanized Brigades of the Ukrainian Armed Forces have been completely surrounded in Kurahovka, simply saying, caught in cauldron. And they are currently located on the territory of this settlement, so let's wait for additional updates, because if this information is correct, then this is going to be the significant disaster for the Ukrainians. Of course, we're not talking about thousands of Ukrainians, but obviously we're talking about several hundreds, maybe we can summarize and get one battalion uh, of uh, both uh, of uh, 46th and 33rd Brigade. And for example, in this video, we can see the process how the Ukrainians were retreating from the village of Ismailovka in the southern direction. As you can see, the Ukrainians are so tired and exhausted, so they were forced to move during the daylight so without any protection, uh, using their feet, and the Russians had no problems to use artillery, but for some reason the Russians didn't do this. The Ukrainians were retreating uh, from the village of Ismailovka in the southern direction towards these uh, facilities. Now let's move further. 
And let's talk about the western part of Tsukurina. Today we have additional changes on the ground that were confirmed by Neutral Mappers and by the video that was published by the Ukrainian sources. In this video we can see the stormtroopers, sabotage and reconnaissance group, as I understand, of the Russian soldiers, seven soldiers, were moving further in the southwestern direction. The Ukrainians managed to ambush them and began bombing them and FPV droning them. So this, the, all these events were uh, taking place exactly in this area. Anyway, based on this video we have adjusted the map in Russian favor by adding additional territories of the western part of Tsukurin under complete Russian control. So the Russians haven't finished the battle of Okurahovka but the Russians began creation and we start seeing the first shapes of the second cauldron of the next cauldron not the second but the next cauldron which the Russians will try to create by moving along this line from the village of Tsukurina in the southern direction towards these railways towards this sector of the railways. If the Russians are able to take this territory under complete control then the Ukrainians most likely that are located would be located in the villages of Beristki, Ilinka, Stepanovka, and so on would be caught in cauldron completely. As for this case, we are talking about a few more, several hundreds of soldiers of the armed forces of Ukraine. Uh, Silidova. Uh, we have a lot of flags, as you can see. We have the flags from the central part. This is the uh, town hall, and in this video, we can see how the Russians were taking off Ukrainian flag and were replacing the Ukrainian flag with the Russian one. Also, we have reports and different mappers update that the territory of the of uh, the village of uh, Sil city of Silidova was secured completely, and this information was confirmed not just by neutral pro-Russian mappers. This information also was confirmed by pro-Ukrainian mappers. Obviously, this is the significant progress. Uh, we still haven't received anything from the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation. Most likely, they're not going to announce about this today. Maybe will, but maybe not. They need some time. They need several days to clean up the city, uh, to bring additional forces, command centers, and then they will announce uh, the victory and they will think what to do next and where to move further. And most likely, once again, the Russians will move in the direction of the South Donetsk direction. Uh, let's say something like this with the purpose to create the biggest uh, Kurahova cauldron and most likely the Russians will try to complete this uh, this battle by the end of the 2024 and due to the things due to the things how everything develops we can make a conclusion that most likely they will be able to finish the battle before 2025 now let's talk about the city of Taresk we have additional changes on the ground in Ukrainian favor and we have returned the the bulk of the district completely under Ukraine control during the previous few days we were receiving a lot of updates about the changes on the ground for example this is the situation on the 23rd of october but after the 23rd of october we were receiving more and more geolocations more and more updates that uh, confirm that ukrainians either managed to restore control over the district or uh, the russians didn't uh, have control over this territory ever so we have adjusted the territory back for now we have several blocks under ukraine control and several blocks in contested area but most likely everything in the Balka district is under complete ukraine control Different pro-Russian sources reported about additional mm, progress of the armed forces of Russian Federation along the river of Krivoy Tarets. So, according to uh, pro-Russian resources, this territory was captured by the Russians. And from this perspective, we can see that the Russians are trying to get as close as possible to the main supply roads that goes uh, from the uh, Konstantinovka agglomeration in the southern direction. So, let's wait and see what is going to be next. But obviously, the situation for the Ukrainians in this area can be can be be very difficult in the very near future. Uh, the Kupin's direction, additional changes on the ground in the village of Tarskoe, the eastern part was captured by the Russians according to different sources. As for the northern Kupin's direction, we haven't received anything. The only thing is that the Russians continue clashes for the village of Pershatravnyva. I reminded that just yesterday the Russians published the video how they managed to establish flak on the highest construction and now we see the significant number of FPV drone attacks which means the final stage of the battle for this territory. And that's it for the short video. Military summary channel reminds me condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye bye.